It's finally fall, so let's talk about all of the autumnal book wrecks. Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited about today's video because we are going to be diving in to all of the books that I recommend for fall. Fall is just like ugh, just the perfect time of year, the crisp leaves, the atmosphere, and the spookiness. So today I'm going to be dividing up all of my recommendations into different categories for the different aspects of fall. And some of these books might fall into more than one category, but I'm going to categorize it with what resonates most with it. And I'm super excited to be break out my recommendation video like this. I've never done a video like it before. And for each category, I'm going to be recommending two books. There is going to be a mix of books that I have read and I haven't read in this. So if I haven't read them, then they're obviously like on my TBR. But I still want to talk about them anyways because I think they fit into the categories. So let's just dive right in. The first category is Dark Academia. Up first for Dark Academia, we have Babel by R.F. Kuang. This book came out last year. I went to the book signing for it. It's a copy signed. Yeah, my copy is signed. R.F. Kuang is known for her books that she's just a very talented writer. She's also a PhD student at the moment. So it makes sense that she's writing a Dark Academia book set in academia. And in Babel, we are following Robin. He is half Chinese and he goes to Oxford University where he trains in all the different languages to join the university's institute of languages otherwise known as Babel. And the tagline from this book is an act of translation is always it's an act of betrayal. You can take the magic of the words lost in translation and turn it into silver bars which then give power to the British Empire. And so the students start to realize this because they were the ones working on this and I think it is about student rebellion and it talks about imperialism pseudo rebellion like things in academia and I've heard it's just like really gripping and insane and I just know Arf Kwong is so talented also when I went to the signing like I just love her as a person she's so cute but also like she opens her mouth and just says like the smartest thing and I adore her and I adore her and I haven't read any of her books yet which I need to reconcile so hopefully I will read this this fall. The other dark academia book I want to talk about is Ninth House by Lee Bardugo I can't believe I actually didn't annotate my copy. I thought I did. Maybe I need to do a reread. But yeah, when I read this book, it was Lee Bardugo's adult debut, and I was just blown away because I've never read anything like it. So it takes place at Yale University, so in the prestigious Ivy League. And we follow Alex, who has recently had an accident and can now see ghosts as a result. She has these mysterious benefactors that pay for her to go to Yale University, even though she is not the typical Yale student, and kind of monitor the secret societies and figure out what's going on there. And oh my god, it's so good. We have this character Darlington in here, who I just love. And I'm mad at myself that I haven't read the sequel yet. I have it here. This is the being an exclusive edition hellbent i, I kind of want to reread this so i can annotate it because it is such like a unique and insane book and thought provoking very thought provoking so yeah i love it and i just love like secret societies and dark academia so next we have cozy romances first one I'm going to talk about I have it I want to read it soon and this is the undertaking of heart and mercy and you can see there's like a little grave on the front but it's all like cutesy so I love that combination of like cute and macabre <laughs> I feel like that just captures the vibe I'm going for and it says true love might be the death of them so we have Hart, who is kind of like a sentry. He patrols the area that they live in and makes sure they're safe. And then we have Mercy, who is an undertaker and takes care of this graveyard. And then what happens is after a run-in that leaves Hart really frustrated, he starts penning anonymous letters to a friend. And then he starts actually receiving responses. And he doesn't know who he's bearing his soul to. I mean, like, anonymous love letters set to the background of a graveyard need I say more? Need I say more? I mean, this just seems so cute. I definitely think that this is going on my October TBR. This next one is another cozy fall romance that I'm mad at myself that I've ever read, and that is The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches by Sangu Mandana. Mika is an orphan, and she has this online account where she pretends to be a witch, and she thinks no one will take it seriously, but someone does, and then sends her a message to go to Nowhere House and train these young witches. 
and I think she has a romance with the librarian of the house and he's like really protective of like the young girls that live there and he's super grumpy and it just sounds so cozy, witchy, romance and perfect for the fall time. Next is Haunted Houses. So the first is a book that I just finished and that is How to Sell a Haunted House by Grady Hendrix. Literally, How to Sell a Haunted House is right in the title. We are following Louise and her parents pass away so she goes to South Carolina to kind of take care of the affairs and clean up the house and she has an estranged brother and they kind of fight over the property. Um, except when she goes to clean out the house, her mother was a doll and puppet collector slash maker and so the house is like full of these things and they might be more sentient than they realize and oh my god, this book was a wild ride. I literally, I felt like my insides curdling because the haunted puppet was so scary and I want nothing to do with puppets anymore. N literally nothing to do with them. I'm terrified. So yeah, if you want to be scared and it's a haunted house setting, like, definitely read it. But like, oh my god, it was crazy. I read the audiobook for this one and reading it on audio just like levels it up for me. Like, I was so scared. The other book is The Hacienda by Isabel Cañas. I'm literally planning on starting this one this week. It, it's going to be one of the next books that I read and I cannot wait. I bought it last year because it sounded perfect and then I never read it because why do I do these things? I don't know, but I'm trying to make a conscious effort towards getting better reading the books that I buy. Um, she also has a new book coming out that's not on this list, but I'm also so interested in picking up, so hopefully I can read this one in September and then pick that one up for October. And this was also compared to Mexican Gothic, which is one of my faves. A spoiler alert, you might see it later in this video, but let's continue. So we are following Beatrice. It's post the Mexican War of Independence and she kind of wants to have some security for her family. And so she marries this guy that has some like shady things associated with him, but he's offering her that kind of like financial security, a home, a place to go. So she moves into the house with him and it's called Hacienda San Isodro. And then creepy things start happening. He leaves for work and she's left alone and the other family members like don't really want to stay in the house and no one will tell her what is going on and the only person that will kind of help her is this priest in town haunted house and i mean look at this cover it's so gorgeous and i just i just know when i read this i'm gonna fall in love with this book like i already know that i love this book even though i haven't read it yet which is crazy if i don't i will be very sad but i know i know in my heart that i love this book Now moving on to mystery thrillers, the first of which is a thriller that I'm currently reading and I'm just so captivated by it, I want to put it on this list, and that is The Only One Left by Riley Sager. We follow Kit, who is a homemade caretaker in the 1980s, and she's assigned to Lenora Hope, who in 1929 was accused of killing her whole entire family in their like mansion on the cliffs of Maine, but they can never prove that she did it. And Lenora basically is kind of invalid like she can only move her left hand due to like polio and strokes and all these illnesses and stuff like that but she's able to type using her left hand and she goes to the typewriter with Kit one day and says I want to tell you everything and so she's going to tell Kit the story of what actually happened that night when her family died and it's been crazy so far I'm continuing to read this and like it's getting good it's getting good and I'm loving the tension and I just feel like Riley Sager just really like captivates you and just really draws you into the story and I love reading thrillers from him I've only read one other one um but I'm gonna probably work my way through his backlist because I just have a lot of fun with it I'm like really trying to read more thrillers so my recommendations might be kind of basic but I'm just dipping my toes into the genre so if you guys have any thrillers you think I should definitely check out let me know, but I definitely really love listening to them on audio, so bonus if any of them are audio. So the next one I want to talk about is The Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware. And this one was interesting because it was a more like technology heavy scary story, whereas I feel like a lot of thrillers are like in old decrepit mansions, but this one was in a very high tech house. And we follow Rowan who becomes a nanny at this house and it's like an old mansion but then it has this like extension that's like brand new high tech and she feels like someone is watching her with like all the cameras and all of the things in the house. The events leading up is you, you discovered this in the beginning of the book is that a child dies and she ends up in prison for the crime and this is basically her writing letters to her, her lawyer 
letting them know what happened insane insanity it just built really well and i like i said i liked the more high tech in a thriller because usually thrillers can tend more on like the gothic side which i love but it was really cool i thought it was just like really well done and again i read this on audio and it was scary i was scared <laughs> Next is death, more specifically death as a character that is in a romance with our leading lady. First up, we have Lake's Edge by Lyndall Clipstone. I mean, look at that cover. If that is not a spooky gothic mansion, I don't know what is. And this one is really good for like the transition between summer and fall, I feel like. So we follow Violetta or Letta um, who will do anything for her younger brother and she basically takes up employee in this mansion that no one will go near because it's rumored that the son killed his whole entire family. And basically this estate is visited by the Lord Under who is basically like death and is this like god that kind of haunts the mansion and Letta is drawn to him while she's also drawn to the son that is accused of all of these murders so it's kind of like a little love triangle going on and i just thought this book was really beautifully written and had the perfect gothic atmosphere but it's um out kind of set in the summer so that's why i feel like it's probably good for the earlier side of fall because it's almost like the spookiness of like a late summer early fall kind of day um, but yeah, the Lord Under, who is this death character, was very intriguing and Letta is definitely kind of caught in between like this regular boy and death essentially. And then this is also the cover to the sequel Forest Fall, which I have yet to read, but I think I will very much enjoy it when I do read it and just the art is beautiful. Who would I be if I didn't mention Belladonna? In this video you guys know this was my top book of last year it's kind of like a gothic murder mystery fantasy romance where we have Cigna where death follows her her whole life like everyone that she's in the care of dies and so then she discovers she actually has these powers and can see and converse with death her latest guardian is the Hawthorns and she goes to Thorn Grove where they live and this family is full of turmoil. The mother had recently passed away. The father kind of just throws these lavish parties to try and deal with the trauma. The daughter is facing the same illness that killed the mother and the son is just trying to figure out like what to do with all of this and so Cigna gets thrown in the middle of this and it's a murder mystery because the mother's ghost comes to Cigna since she can see ghosts and touch death. Um, and is like, you need to figure out like what happened to me. And so her best chance of discovering what happened is by partnering with the elusive figure Death. And this is just so beautifully written. I just, I love this book. I'm actually reading Foxglove right now, which is so exciting because this book is just like my everything and I love Death. He's a hottie in this book, okay? The next category is atmospheric. First up we have Spells for Forgetting by Adrian Young. I haven't read this one yet but I've read almost all of her other books. She's a lot of like very beautifully written YA books and I especially love her Fable series which is really good for looking for pirates but that's kind of a summer mood and we're in a fall mood now so time for Spells for Forgetting and this was also her adult debut. So Emery lives on a small island and her life changed forever the night that her best friend was found dead and her boyfriend, August, was accused of doing it. Since that tragic night, she's kind of ended up where she didn't want to, which is running her family's tea shop on their island. Emery starts to see omens and then August arrives back on the island after his mother's tragic death and he has to kind of tie up the loose ends. And then they kind of have to rehash the past. I mean, this just sounds like a mixture of atmosphere, mystery, heartache, and angst, and it sounds like the perfect atmospheric fall read, and I know Adrian Young has really, really beautiful prose, so I think this is perfect for fall. The next atmospheric book I want to talk about is The Bone Orchard by Sarah A. Mueller. I've owned this one for like a year, and I really need to get to it because every time I hear someone talking about it, I'm like, wow, I would really love that, and it just sounds so atmospheric, like so atmospheric. Behind a brothel there is a garden where the trees are grown from bones and nourished by the darkest of secrets and it's tended to by the women that live at the orchard house and each of these women are named after like different 
emotions. So we're following Charm in this story and she is the emperor's personal concubine. And then one day he summons her to the palace and says that she needs to discover which one of her sons will be inheriting the empire by figuring out which son killed him. And so she's kind of tasked with solving this mystery. And she kind of must choose between justice for an empire that she hates or vengeance at the cost of her own freedom. It just sounds so like macabre, atmospheric, and perfect for the fall season. Next up is vampires because who doesn't love vampires? First up we have A Dowry of Blood by S.T. Gibson and oh my god this one sounds so cool and it is the tale of Constanza who is the first bride of Dracula and Dracula kind of has a bunch of different consorts and it's written in a form of like letters and it's the story of like I guess her escaping this abusive relationship and also finding comfort in the other brides of Dracula so very cool so I want to read it it just sounds like dark gripping romance that is so cool and unique Next up for vampires, we have House of Hunger by Alexis Henderson. Look at how beautiful that cover is. Marion Shaw was raised in the slums and then one day she sees an advertisement to become a blood maiden to the wealthy elite who are known to drink blood. And so she gets drawn into the orbit of Countess Lisavette and the Countess takes special interest in her but as she is in this House of Hunger, she discovers more and more secrets that she is not supposed to unearth. I mean, this cover alone has convinced me to read it. It is on my September TBR, you can watch that video, so I will hopefully be picking this one up very, very soon. Next up is horror, and the first book that I hope to read soon is What Moves the Dead by T. Kingfisher. A lot of T. Kingfisher's works have been calling out to me lately, so I definitely want to pick up some of them and start reading them because this just seems like a book that I will love. I've picked up this book a few times in Barnes & Noble, haven't bought it yet, but the illustrations on it are so spooky. And apparently there's a sequel coming out soon, which is also very exciting. So Alex is a retired soldier and he hears word that his childhood friend is dying and so he rushes to her side and in Madeline's like rural country home and what he finds there is a fungal infestation, possessed wildlife, and a dark pulsing lake. Which the mushrooms, the fungi, they're scary. There's a fungus among us and I'm scared of it. And so Alex, aided by a mycologist and a doctor, must figure out what is going on. And also, <laughs> ever since watching The Last of Us, literally, I am terrified of fungi. Like, I'm, I'm actually scared. I'm actually scared. And I work in a lab, and sometimes there are fungal contaminations in our cell culture, and I'm literally like, the fungi are taking over, and it's scary. And they're like big fuzzy balls. <sighs> but it will definitely creep me out, so I'm like a fan of reading a book about them, you know? Next up for horror is My Beloved Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. I am so shocked I have not read another book by this woman because I love this book so much, so clearly I need to rectify that. Beautiful cover. This is the book of the month edition. I do want to also pick up a regular edition of this to annotate. It's 1950s Mexico and Noemi is living in Mexico City. She is a socialite and she's you know social butterfly and all of a sudden she receives this frantic letter from her cousin Catalina who married an English gentleman and moved to the Mexican countryside. So she packs up everything and goes to comfort her cousin and when she gets there weird things start happening to her in this house. She like can't sleep at night because she keeps getting woken up by nightmares and things just evolve into the creepier and creepier. And the only person that she kind of co finds comfort with is the family's youngest son. And this was the first like true horror book that I ever picked up. And I just like kind of picked it up on a whim and I fell in love with this book. Actually, I kind of want to reread it and annotate it. But this book is mesmerizing it's insane and i loved it so 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 much beautiful writing just obsessed with it if you read any book from this video read this one <laughs> and 
And last but not least, we have Gothic Fantasy. This is one of my favorite types of fantasy, and I may do a longer Gothic Fantasy recommendations video if you guys want to see, so like, let me know down below if you would like to see that. Um, but here are my recommendations for this video. Um, starting off strong, we have The Foxglove King by Hannah Witten. And this cover, this is a Bean edition, love it. So Lore has death magic and she runs poisons for the cartel that brought her in. Because she has to hide this death magic, it is not allowed. Then she is captured by the sainted kings of warriors and she expects death for her death magic, but that is not what happens. There have been entire villages in the kingdom that seem to just die overnight, so August is like, you need to figure out what is going on using your magic. And so she kind of gets like thrust into this court life. I have heard also that this is a love triangle and a lot of people like don't know which one they like better of the two. So yeah, sign me up. Death magic, gothic fantasy, need to say more. And then next is A One Dark Window by Rachel Gillig, which I feel like kind of took off um, on TikTok this year. Also, this book makes me smile because my fiance got it for me for my birthday. Elizabeth has a monster spirit trapped in her head and then she meets a mysterious highwayman and they kind of go on a journey to figure out what is happening to cure the kingdom of the dark magic that is plaguing it and it says a maiden must unleash the monster within to save her kingdom in this dark lush gothic fantasy debut apparently it has a sequel coming out soon as well it's published by orbit and i kind of trust anything that orbit publishes and i mean it just seems like perfect gothic spooky vibe for the fall all right guys so that is my video of fall recommendations if you have watched this far please leave a little pumpkin because we're getting into the mood for the spooky season i was really excited putting this list together i loved categorizing things and it made me realize i have some books that i need to add to my tbr for october that i didn't cover in september because i want to read everything that i talked about and so many books to read so little time you know but I'm so excited for fall and I definitely am going to be doing a lot of fall content so let me know if there's any particular thing that you want to see down below. Have some fun, read some books, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.